nearly there, man. We're nearly there. We're touching distance. I know Marcel said in his fan view, he said, Champions League is ours and it would take an absolute catastrophe for it to not be ours. So I pretty much do agree with him, but we still need that extra point in the bag. And you know what? Like Minna said, not even just a point in the bag. Let's go mash up Chelsea. Chelsea, <laughs> let's give them licks. Chelsea got to go to Man City and watch them be crowned champions in their face. Then the next game on Thursday, we want to be celebrating top four in their face as well. Let's make it a really difficult um, evening for Chelsea, a difficult week for Chelsea. But on us, look, I said before the game, didn't I, in the road trip, I said, please, just give us something as the fans to say, listen, there's been a lot of horrible away days where we've, we've thrown in the towel and we've been horrible. We've had some disgusting performances. Just give us three points in the final away game. And you know what? I said that scoring in the early moments, scoring in the moments when we're dominating, scoring in the moments where we're doing well, that's the key. That's what changes games. And we managed to do that. And I got to start a Casemiro, man. This guy, listen, when he first came here, I did have reservations, not about him as how good of a player he is, but just how he would do in our system, how we're doing in our midfield. And what I didn't make him synonymous with is goals, to be honest with you. And actually this year, he scored some important goals, some really important goals where you go, you know what? That is, that is a massive impact on us, especially when nobody else is stepping up. Um, he did it against Chelsea, got the only goal of the game to, to, self, to salvage a point. So that has a direct you know, point in where we're at now because it's, it's, it's in our points tally, isn't it? Today gets us all three points because we, we didn't look like scoring a second. Um, no real massive, massive chances. So he's the difference maker today. He is the match winner today. So you have to give him credit. And um, I think he was pretty good on the ball as well. It was just one of his better performances um, since he's come back from, from that initial... Uh, time out, well, uh, another um, uh, suspension. So he's, he's done really well there. The defence is really what shines today, though, because it's another clean sheet. And you know what? You have to think about it like this, right? David De Gea's got his issues. No one's, no one's saying he doesn't. Absolutely does have his issues. We know that. I've seen the light. You, you know, you guys have seen me see the light. And there's some of you watching still saying, see, you know, look what he does today. But to give him his flowers in terms of talking about this 90 minutes, it shows that actually... This is, this is why he's part of that clean sheet. Um, sorry, the, the Golden Glove. This is why he's part of achieving the Golden Glove. He's done absolutely brilliantly at times this year, making massive, massive saves. And Eric Ten Hag said it in his post-match comments. I read that, you know, the reason why we've got this much clean sheets is because David De Gea has had a good season. And as a goalkeeper, when you get, when you get the Golden Glove... You can say it doesn't tell the whole story about whether or not that goalkeeper is the best for you going forward and how you want to play. But in terms of keeping clean sheets, he's been integral. He has. You can't say he hasn't because he's made big saves. But he's also been integral in terms of we've, we've you know, lost, conceded goals because he's got, what, four goals leading to mistakes. But today, you know, when it's nip and tuck and it's tight like I predicted, we weren't going to go on and, and score loads of goals. He makes two big saves, both on Dominic Solanke, and that is what he's there to do, and that is what he did do. So Dave saves, he saves the day today for sure, because like I said, when you only get the one, you need to make sure you keep that clean sheet. And as for the rest of the back four, I just think Victor Lindelof, honestly, he just deserves so much praise. He deserves so much flowers, because at the end of the day, this is a guy who's had to sit back this season, be fourth choice for most of the season. Right up, right up until pretty much now when Martinez and Varane got injured at the same time. And then that's where Ten Hag went, you know what, I ain't, I ain't, playing, um, I ain't playing Harry Maguire. It's now Harry Maguire sitting back thinking, I can't get a game. I can't get a game for Man United. You know, he's not, unless, uh, the only time Harry Maguire is going to play is, is maybe against Fulham. If we, if we get the job done against Chelsea. That's all he's going to do. And I was reading that today that Lindelof has started nine successive Premier League games for the first time in two years. And we've kept clean sheets in five of them. Um, he's just really aggressive. He's really willing to go and engage. We can't call him soft anymore. He doesn't have that question mark over physicality. And actually, we're seeing a player who actually has always been comfortable on the ball. Always been, you know, a player that is, is, he wants the ball at his feet. So he's got the perfect manager for that. And he has this calm and influence where he's able to firefight, he's able to sort problems out um, at the back and just he's a calm and influence. And then when you, when you couple that with what Varane is as well, they look like the perfect partnership. They look like the partnership that we didn't know we needed. Obviously, Varane and, um, and Leecher is, that's what it is and that's what it will be. But Lindelof has proved, I think KG said it in his, in his reaction, he's, he's proved that he's more than just a backup guy. You know, like he can start games. There's no problem with him starting games. He is steady. So I just have to big him up because I thought he was absolutely um, fantastic. Today at the top end of the pitch, 
we wasn't great. We wasn't great. It was a, it was another game where we 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 lacked you know that that cutting edge to go and get a second goal. We lacked the cutting edge um, to go and to make more guilt edge chances. But but team shape wise and organisation. We were good. I think if you're looking at people who you know underperformed today, I think Bruno was extremely wasteful today. Really poor on the ball. Um, a lot of us cut him a lot of slack because we know the type of performances he can put in and how good he can be on the ball. But in, in, we can't cut him slack for this 90 minutes. That he played really, really poorly today. There's no hiding that. Jaden Sancho, I think, played really poorly today as well. Not enough output. Anthony, same kind of thing. Although we got the work rate from him. So across the front, we weren't great. Martial was the same thing. And then you see that Martial kind of walked off, then he's. Then I read that he came back to the bench. Only Ten Hag knows what really happened there. Um, at first, I was thinking, is that some sort of Ronaldo vibe, just kind of storming off if he'd been taken off, he shouldn't be doing it? Or was he going for treatment? But we could see from Martial's face that he was a bit perplexed at why he was taken off. And actually, in that moment, to be fair, I probably agree with him. I don't know why he was taken off in that moment. Um, nothing has really been said by Ten Hag that I've seen yet at the time of recording as to why he, he did that. But listen, it's all about... Um, securing Champions League football and getting that away win. And we've managed to we've managed to do one of them, which is get the away win. And with Liverpool slipping up, which was nearly, we were watching that game, we were a few minutes away thinking if they could just keep the score at that, it's done and dusted today. We've got top four, but we have to go again. And you know what? I, I kind of, not like, well, obviously I would have preferred for Liverpool just dropping it's done now, but it doesn't change anything. At least it doesn't change anything. The assignment was always go and get those six points you know, from the remaining two games. Now we don't need to do that. Now we only need to get one point because we've got three today and Liverpool dropped two for us. So we only need one point and that'll be the six. Um, and I wanted to set up that under the lights, Old Trafford, Thursday night, night game. Chelsea coming off the back of getting whooped by Man City, which is probably going to happen, even though I hope they don't do it, Man City. But it's inevitable they're going to win the league. So they're going to get whooped by, by, by Man City. And then let them have to come to Old Trafford. Don't don't even get on the bus and come back to London. Stay up there. Go do training in the park on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then be ready for Old Trafford. Don't even go back to London. Let them stay up in Manchester and get two licks. That's what I want. And just put them in misery, you know. And then they've got to play Newcastle on the last day of the season as well, which is more licks for them. Yeah, let's compound their misery, but at the same time doing our job, which is getting into the into the Champions League. And I think we've we've set it up perfectly. I said if we beat Wolves, I think we'll get it. And if we get this win, we set up that game for Chelsea. Um, another player I want to talk about as well, though, Wan Bissaka. Wan Bissaka, yes, going forward, that's that's usually been a deficiency in his game, but he's improving, man. He's getting better. He's becoming really dependable. And I think Eric Tenag's seeing that as well. You know, this is a, a game where he could have he could have just started Dallow, to be fair, just just because I think we're going to be on the ball. I think we're going to have a lot more of the ball. I'm just going to start Dallow. But no, he went with Wan-Bissaka and wan has proven that actually he's not just getting selected for the games where there's a Matoma or a Sent Maximum or a, or a, I don't know, what other good left wingers are there. Uh, Martinelli, you know, he's not just bringing him in for these games. He can play in the games where we've got more possession of the ball. He wants him to, to, to keep improving. So that's what we're seeing. Nearly there, one point left, touching distance. Thank you, Man United, for getting a win today. And let's go complete the job on Chelsea. And I don't just want to get a draw against them. I want to mash them up, yeah? Send Frank Lampard packing, mate. Like I said, I want two L's for them, man, there. In my, well, actually, maybe one, because maybe we could delay Man City. But anyway, at least us mashing them up. That's what I want to see. My man of the match today, I've got to agree with what a lot of other, other guys have said. Victor Lindelof, man. He's just been unbelievable today. Casemiro as well as the match winner, so he could easily be... Actually, do you know what? Everyone's gone Lindelof. So I feel like, let me just not follow suit just to go against the grain a little bit. Why not? Casemiro, mate. Casemiro, I'm going to give him man of the match because he is the match winner today with a fantastic goal. That's not an easy strike as well, by the way. Not an easy strike at all. So Casemiro, yeah, man of the match.